or maybe they've been told that your child will never grow up to be a normal person or maybe they've heard that they shouldn't try to look for help because eventually the child will you know have a shorter life something like that just for them to know that there is someone there who cares understands and wants to help them i think is is that's when the healing starts Welcome back to another episode of On the Ground with Samaritan's Purse, where we take you to the front lines and behind the scenes of our work around the world. I'm your host, Christy Graham, and today we're going to be talking about Children's Heart Project. But before we get into the project and the testimonies, I just want to stop and ask you a question. Can you think of a time or a situation where you have felt helpless in your circumstances and it just didn't look like you would be able to get out of it? And maybe you're even in it right now. You're going through a hard time and it doesn't even look like the fog could ever lift. And you're hopeless and you have despair. Well, today we want to encourage you through testimonies and stories that, yes, sometimes our circumstances are beyond our control and they are hopeless in man's eyes. But we know with God, nothing is impossible. And God is our hope. He's our ever-present help in trouble. And we're guaranteed in this life that we will face troubles. We will have trials. Uh, but we aren't alone in them. And there are many families around the world that face trials that they are hopeless and they cannot imagine a way out. And in Children's Heart Project, that's the case. Their child has a heart defect. Because of the lack of access to medical care in their home country, their child will never have a chance at a normal life. They cannot access surgery and their life will be hindered by their condition. But that is where Children's Heart Project comes in. We come into families' lives where they have a hopeless situation, they're unable to access surgery, they're unable to afford it, and Children's Heart Project allows them this opportunity. And the voice that you heard in the beginning was Sheena. She is our program manager for Children's Heart Project in Uganda. And for those of you who've listened in the past, you know that I love this project. As a mom of four uh, who has been to many specialists, I know how discouraging it can be when you don't have help or you can't get a diagnosis for your child. And so for these families... Um, who can't get it or can't get the surgery, my heart just breaks. And we've loved meeting these families, meeting these kids, seeing the transformation. And we've shared many episodes in the past. And we'll put the link in our show notes if you weren't able to hear them before. Go back and listen. But today, we're going to talk about uh, the start of the project uh, by going, taking you to a screening in Uganda. And Sheena, she was also a recipient of the Children's Heart Project surgery uh, when she was a teenager. And so she has both experience personally, but also as working through the ministry. And so she explains why it's so vital here in Uganda. It is good to see your beautiful face and so excited to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. So we have told people about the program before, but I want to dive, I guess, deeper into Uganda. Maybe tell us a little bit about the healthcare system and why Children's Heart Project is important in your country. So Uganda as a country is a developing country. And unfortunately for us, the health sector is not the very best. Um, Over the past few years, I think we have seen a bit of improvement in the uh, medical care for children who are born with congenital heart defects. I'm sure there are so many children out there in Uganda who didn't even get to the point of having a diagnosis. People thought these heart problems could have been either witchcraft or sorcery. But now with the improvement in the health sector, just a little bit, just a tip of the iceberg, unfortunately, As a country, we are not yet at the point where we can uh, take care of every heart patient. Uh, Some cases are more complex. Right now, I think they can do the simpler cases, but we have so many children who are not able to have surgery in country. Then secondly, um, being that the economy is not the best, we have so many uh, families that are living below the poverty line and they cannot even afford you know, monthly uh, drugs for their children. Let alone they cannot afford a surgery abroad. So Samaritan Pass has been a huge blessing to the Ugandans. As you heard Sheena mention, there are so many obstacles to kids receiving critical heart surgery in Uganda. Unfortunately, cultural stigma, financial hardship, and the lack of medical care can lead to prolonged sickness and premature death in these kids. In many families, they wait in line, hoping that their child will one day be chosen, and there just aren't enough hospitals to receive this care. And that is where Samaritan's Purse comes in. We partner with the Uganda Heart Institute, 
and we screen kids to identify the right patients that Samaritan's Purse can help to provide life-saving heart surgery. So basically, what that is what the screening entails. And really, it is a, a very tasking program because it, it, it's especially emotionally and spiritually. For us, I think that is the hardest step for us as staff mm. because during screening is when you tell one parent that we can help you and you tell the other, sorry, we can't help you. Mm. So it is very, very difficult for us. But... Um, we, you know, we, we we like to serve knowing that God is with us and God is with those families and he can always help them however he wills to do that. And uh, for the children that are enrolled into our program, then the journey starts from there, which I call the journey of healing, basically. Hmm. It is such a relief when a parent hears that, you know what, we are now in this together. You have someone that is going to work with you hmm. and we are going to try to get help for your child. And then that's where the healing actually starts from. Mm -hmm. So we love screening, Mm -hmm. but sometimes it's sad. I can't imagine the tension and the heartache at meeting families whose children's medical conditions make them not eligible for surgery. And then on the other hand, the joy of being able to walk with some families in their journey towards healing. Stephen, one of our podcast correspondents, traveled to Uganda, and he had the opportunity to join Sheena and her team as they conducted the difficult but deeply important work to see which children can be enrolled in the 2024 program. And these families will ultimately receive life-saving surgery abroad at one of our partner hospitals. Today we are screening the patients that were referred to our program by Uganda Heart Institute, and the screening process uh, just entails us doing the echocardiograms, eventually we shall do the blood tests and uh, take uh, information about their families, about their backgrounds and things like that. And how many children are we looking to screen today? So today we'll be seeing 12 patients, 12 patients, very busy day, but we are happy that all of them have arrived and our hope is that they will be healed physically, spiritually and emotionally. And also Children's Heart Project, we believe the healing is not just for the patient, but also for the mother that has gone through so much with a sick child and the father, and also this unites the family back together. Along with our full-time staff, doctors volunteer their time from all around the world to give up hard-earned vacation time to serve with Samaritan's Purse in places like Uganda. And our volunteer doctors are amazing. Uh, Truly, I'm so touched and convicted by their dedication and their love for their patients. They give so much of their time to willingly serve. And while on the ground, they spend hours diagnosing these kids, but also ministering to their parents as they gently explain the complex health conditions in great detail. And that's something as a parent, you know, sometimes we, you can read something, but when a doctor is able to explain it to you um, in, and be able to answer questions that you have that are personal to you, it's so helpful. And this was the case with Dr. Elijah Bolin. He examined a young boy with his same name, and he brought much needed answers to his parents. Elijah. Um, he has two holes. There's really only one hole that's causing problems for him. Dr. Bolin was able to give Elijah's parents the wonderful news that their 11-year-old son is eligible for surgery. Stephen was able to sit down with them to hear more of their story and how long they had been waiting. Stephen also spoke to Elijah's father, Patrick. Okay, Elijah, what was the doctor's name that you just met today? Dr. Elijah. Uh, Dr. Elijah, too. Okay, that's a good sign. I think you have a doctor with your own name. That's a pretty good sign. Stephen talked to Elijah's father, Patrick. And Patrick said that the last 11 years, they've been hard. He's had to work hard to provide medication for Elijah. But he also said something profound. He said, we know life is better than money. And he's right. As parents, life and enjoying our kids, that's, that's all we want. And both Elijah's mom and dad, they've sacrificed a lot for their son. And Stephen asked Elijah's mom how this has been for her. As his mother, um, what's it been like dealing with his heart condition and (laughs) knowing your son has a heart problem? I felt very bad. I I was very stressed 
Yeah, both that was a, a new thing to me. I was stressed mm. about that. I, I never knew kids can fall sick, heart problem. I no, never knew. Okay. It was my first time. Mm. Yeah. Mm, I mm. see. Mm. And so when you found out he has this problem and that you were going to have to keep him on medication, he was maybe going to have surgery, what kind of thoughts did you start having? About medicine was not very bad to me, mm. giving him, but what I was so much hurt about was surgery. When I heard about yeah. it, I, was, I feared even the, I got a problem at the back. I could not stand, I could not sit. I was scared was about shocked. this. I was shocked about that. Mm. Yeah. She was in shock. In shock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I see. What about you, Patrick, when you learned he had to have this big yeah. surgery? Yeah. So what so, I did, I, I just went into the bathroom. That's where I cried. Mm. I was so heartless. As this dad said, they were feeling heartless. But they were committed to not getting discouraged. They fasted and prayed for their son's healing. So then my pastor told me that, you know what? God is going to work, make a way through. They've been praying church. and fasting for 27 fasting. days. Yes, 27 days. Wow, for yeah. Elijah. For Elijah. Wow. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> everything for us first we put God first, then yeah. others follow. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Well, today's an exciting day then because it seems like God has really brought an answer to that prayer for you and your church and your community. When the doctor, just in there, Dr. Elijah Boland, when he tells you that, you know, your son Elijah was a candidate for the surgery, that this is a surgery that could help him, how did you feel? What went through your head? Yeah, I was very happy mm. about that mm. and about Samaritan mm. that I know they are going to help us and God is going to help us. Mm. I was really happy from home. Mm. Yeah, from home. By the time you called me, I was just praising God. Amen. In the, in the house, Amen. I'm praising God. I'm pra Even if I'm moving, mm. me, I'm praising Him because I know God is the one who connects you people. Mm. And you cannot do without God. No. I know you always do because God is with you. Amen. Um, and God has done it for Elijah. Yeah. yeah. I loved hearing this testimony from Elijah's parents. And I can't imagine the relief and joy that they must have felt to receive this news. His mother's response was so beautiful. I love how she praised God. She was giving him the glory, honor, and praise for this hopeful news. And being told that your child is sick, but eligible for surgery. And not only that, but now you won't even have to worry about paying for it. It's something that they had only dreamed and prayed for. But this isn't always the case. Sometimes families, it, the news comes with fear. They're often scared. Will my kid make it through surgery? What if something goes wrong? Can I trust these people and fly across the world to doctors I don't know? And now I want to introduce you to another mom. Her name is Joyce, and she traveled through the night to attend our screening with her son, who is less than a year old. And when she learned that he needed surgery abroad, she was terrified. But the Samaritan's Purse team was able to love her through the process and provide her with a new perspective on what surgery would mean for her son's future. This one is on name Henry, my son. Henry. Mm. And how old is Henry? Henry is seven months. Seven months. Mm. Henry's a happy boy. Yeah. When you look at Henry as his mother, what do you feel? How does he make you feel when you see that cute little smile? <laughs> I, I feel happy when I am to see Henry, mm -hmm. but again, I feel pain because I feel as if Henry is passing through a hard pain. Mm. Mm. Because Henry is not growing like the other brother mm. of his. Mm. It's just tiny. Every day the weight is coming down. It's not like the other boy of mine. Mm -hmm. At first, uh, what came into my mind when I heard that Henry has problem? with the heart. Even I, I talked to myself, I said, God, what have I done to deserve a baby with such a heart? Mm. Then again, today when I spoke with the doctor, at least I felt some comfort mm, that God will help Henry to make it through the surgery. Mm. And I believe that he'll help, help Henry we do too. To be well. Mm -hmm. We do too. Mm -hmm. For people who listen to this, they're praying people. They like to pray for others. Mm -hmm. 
how can people be praying for Henry um, in the in the months and days ahead? I want that people should pray to Henry so that God should help the doctors who will do the surgery, mm -hmm. so that God should guide them mm -hmm. and they help my boy to make it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's not a easy journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But through God, I believe that he'll make it. During the screening weeks, patients come in search of help from all walks of life. Some are older teenagers who have taken on a lot of family responsibility at home. Others, like Henry, haven't even celebrated their first birthday. But they all matter to us, and more importantly, to God. So I love how our teams cherish them and help them each feel seen and heard by God. So Shana, who do you have with you? I have Myra. One year, four months. Oh, she's little. Yes. Myra, are you scared? I it's think right. she's scared, but we will make friends. That's right. <laughs> today. <laughs> When we host our screenings, parents have often traveled long distances to see if their child can be helped. And this is their final, final option. And as a mom, I can't imagine what that's like, to know that your kid needs help. They need surgery, and you can't provide that. Either you don't have the finances or there's not even a hospital for you to go to. And I love watching these parents' persistence. They travel great lengths to provide for their children. And if you're listening and you're a parent, you know that you would do whatever it takes uh, to keep your child healthy. And you're probably inspired by their selfless love for their kids. And while the hope for surgery and a chance at life is so important with the work of Children's Heart Project, that is not our only goal. Every screening, every follow-up appointment, and their time in the U.S. or Grand Cayman is always coupled with the gospel. We want to heal their hearts physically, but more importantly, we want to introduce them to Jesus Christ, the ultimate healer. And Michael, one of our staff members, he shared the gospel while sitting in the waiting room full of parents at the screening. And just this interaction alone, nine men and women accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11, Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11, it says, this is the word of God. It says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster, plans to bring about the future, the future you hope for. Amen. So this is God's word. God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Who knew that today you'll be here? Who knew that your child will be among those who will be selected. Right now, we don't know what God's plan is. But he says, I know the plan that I have for your children. That happened not because you sin or your child sin. No. That child was born like that, so that <laughs> God will demonstrate his glory in the life of that child, okay? That's why he say, I know the plans I have for you. So we use scripture, believing that the word of God has power and it brings healing. Mm -hmm. We use scripture and we, you, you, we share with them because as we are interacting, we are getting to know them and they are getting to know us. Mm -hmm. So they tell us they are about their journey, where they have been, what they have tried. And you'd be amazed the stories you'll hear, what they have tried, they've been to which doctors and all this and all that. And then for us, we come and we tell them, you know what, let us try. How about we try Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Let us pray. And then we pray with them. And from this, they begin to see even how we take care of them, our time there. We try to make them as comfortable as possible with their babies. By the end of the day, they are open. I just love Sheena's passion for this work. She believes every word that she shares with her patients and families, not only because it's her job, but because it's her story as well. When Sheena was a young teenager, she was enrolled into the Samaritan's Purse Children's Heart Project, and she received surgery that saved her life. And from this experience, she truly understands the power of the program, but more importantly, the power of the gospel and what God is doing through this program. 
And you you touched on it really quickly, but for for people who don't know your story, you said you were a heart patient. I mean, you received this heart surgery through Children's Heart Project. Um, and I love your story so much because you not only have the knowledge, you know, of the system and how it works. So maybe tell us your story and how that allows you to be more empathetic because you truly understand what they're going through. So I received my diagnosis when I was 13 years mm-hmm. old to start. At that time, Uganda Heart Institute, I think, was just starting. Was They were just starting to provide those diagnostic services. So at 13 years old is when I uh, my parents got to know that I had a heart problem. Then between 13 years and 15 years, it was a roller coaster of emotion. Hmm. I mean, my my first of all, my father was like, what is even a heart problem? Which is very common in Uganda. Mm-hmm. We have seen so many fathers abandon mothers with their sick children because they believe culturally that is an abomination. Or they believe, you know, I can't have a child who it's seen as a as a disability, mm-hmm. unfortunately, here in Uganda. But that is because people don't have to, so much information. But I saw how my mother toiled to find a solution from herbal medicines to different places. Wherever they told her to go to look for a cure, she went. Hmm. But every time we tried this and tried that and it failed, I saw her hope just falling hmm. every day. Hmm. And even sometimes I would have, I wanted to pretend that the problem has gone so that I can lessen this burden from her. But uh, the only solution would have to be some type of surgery. Hmm. Um, There are nights where I would hear her crying. and Of course, in the village, people would say, if a child has a heart problem, there will never be a normal child. So growing up, I had all this. So as a child, I remember even coming to a point and saying, you know what, I am ready to go home to heaven, if heaven exists, because I didn't even understand what heaven was. Hmm. I remember one evening, I even turned to the wall and I prayed and I said, you know, God, I think the pain that my family has gone through, my mother waking up every night to check on me to see if I'm still breathing, I think it is enough. Hmm. So it is okay for me to to go home if there is heaven. Hmm. But then I said, but if I am to die, I pray that it will be in my sleep so I don't feel any pain. Hmm. That's what I said. Hmm. But um. Just like these parents, I remember one day my mother received a call and the people were saying that they are from Samaritan's past. They invited her to come to for the screening. First of all, she thought they were born men because that is Mm -hmm. that happens here in Uganda. But I remember meeting the staff of Samaritan past and there was something about them. Hmm. They were patient. They were kind. They were compassionate. There was just something about them. I was 13 years old and I could tell that there is a difference between these people that we have just met and all the other people that we've met who are promising treatment and everything. So I think that's when I started questioning, what is it about these people? I wanted to know why they were doing the things that they were doing. Long story short, I had surgery uh, in 2004. It was beyond our imagination that someone could give you such a free gift, such Mm -hmm. a big gift for free. It didn't make sense. But now I understand it didn't make sense, just like it didn't make sense when someone, when the people of Samaritan Pass in the very beginning told us that Jesus loves us. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Why does Jesus love us? What do we have to give him in return? Why did he have to die for us? But uh, we waited for the bill and the bill never showed up. And I thank God so much because now you know, that turned into a testimony. Mm -hmm. And the people in the village, they've been waiting (laughs) for the bill. They've never seen Mm -hmm. it. So even for these beneficiaries, when they are saying, you know what, I have tried everything and I don't think there is hope, I keep saying, Lord, you have done it before. Lord, you have done it before. For 400 families, you can do it again. And that keeps us going. Because we know that God is able even to not just to to heal the physical heart of a child, but God is able to bring reconciliation. God is able to bring total healing in a community. God is able to do a new thing in these communities just by going through one surgery. Just Mm -hmm. like Jesus said in in, uh, John chapter 9, say that so that the works of God will be seen and his name will be glorified all over the world. And we have seen that happen. 
I know I said it earlier, but I just love this program. And I've seen firsthand the ripple effects that it has. Through this project, 12 children received surgery in 2023. And that multiplied to 367 people receiving Jesus Christ as their Savior. Uh, This multiplication happens through parents and family members receiving Christ, and many times neighbors and friends as they come back home. Uh, They see these children return home completely changed. The kids often leave with blue lips and barely surviving, and when they come home with energy and strength, playing and running with their peers, this physical transformation often leads to spiritual transformation. And as you listened along today, I hope the Lord was able to speak to your heart and encouraged you how God can use what seems like a hopeless situation to show His glory and His power through His people. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you have a great week.